This is the NC Fusion Podcast, sponsored by Wake Forest Medical. Thank you for joining us on the North Carolina Fusion Podcast. My name is Scott Wollaston, and I serve as the Executive Director for the North Carolina Fusion. Today I will be speaking with Mark Simpson, Technical Director of North Carolina Fusion Soccer. We'll be speaking about some of the work that is going on to continue to improve the quality of the soccer program from the feedback process for players to the development of our coaches. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to the North Carolina Fusion podcast. Uh, This is an opportunity for our membership and for um, our community to get to know the things that we're doing as an organization, meet some of the people that are involved, um, and just get an inside look on things that are going on at North Carolina Fusion. Uh, Today I have Mark Simpson with us. Um, He is our technical director of soccer. Uh, Mark and I have been working alongside each other for about 15 years now, and uh, I'm really excited about the opportunity to talk to him about some of the things that he's working on and uh, that the club is doing this year. So, Mark, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about your your background so that our membership gets to know a little bit more about you. Um, I am... Obviously from Newcastle, England, North East England. I um, was associated with Nottingham Forest Football Club till the age of 16, 17. And then I um, I took a soccer scholarship at Rutgers University that had positives and negatives, I think we have to say. Um, it's Alexi Lalas' school, right? That was where Alexi Lalas went, a very famous alumni. Yeah. Um, then that didn't quite work out, so I went to Loughborough University. I have an economics degree. Um, and I had an opportunity to coach in, um, to basically go back to the New Jersey area to coach. And I always, uh, despite my Rutgers experience not being ideal, I wanted to go back and um, visit and live in America if I could. So I worked in New Jersey, um, New York area, and I've been in Winston-Salem for the last 15 years in a variety of roles at Twins and now Fusion. Awesome. And t- so tell everyone kind of what are what are those roles that you've, had, um, I know, first at Twins um, and now at North Carolina Fusion, um, what experiences you've had as a, as a coach, as a director? Um, I, I obviously started as a part-time coach, um, then a, a variety, really, assistant director of coaching, director of coaching, junior academy director, under 11 to 14 boys director, um, and now I am the North Carolina Fusion technical director. And what, um, of all those experiences, what do you feel after kind of getting to work with many different levels and um, ages and uh, genders, um, what is kind of, do you feel is kind of your sweet spot in terms of first coaching, but then also even, um, you know, bigger picture as technical director? Um, I, I, I'm not, uh, I like working with players who, who have fun. Mm-hmm. and want to learn and when they arrive at training they have a real desire to to want to engage in the environment and want to improve in the environment um, I found personally under 11 to under 12 boys um, I found of the, the teams I've ever coached or the ages they were the ones who embraced that the most but I think in any age group in any gender it's all about the the, the, the children and the kids you're working with and the type of characters they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so speak to your role as technical director. What are the, um, obviously it's a new role for you. Um, it's a kind of a new role for the club, to be honest, as we've, as we've brought everything together. What are the, the things that you um, are doing? What do you want to implement uh, in our program? Um, and, and then I guess even talk about some of the evidence-based um, things that you work on. Um, I think the role is wide, mm-hmm. extensive. Um, I would like, um, in my perfect world, that when somebody sees a, a North Carolina Fusion team, regardless of the age, regardless of the gender, they have certain standards, um, high standards, they have cer- a certain culture, mm-hmm. and they have a certain style of play. I think this is very much a, a three to five year plan to get anywhere near this, so all the steps we need to take before them. One of the things, m- my most important job is to improve the knowledge of the staff. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
So they are able to implement some of the ideas I believe we could do. Uh, I would like to have a com common language and terminology within the club. So regardless of level, age, we're all speaking the same language. So players understand when they, if they get promoted to another team or, or nothing changes between age groups. Um, so, I mean, the principles, the game cues um, are so vital, but this is a long-term process. I would like, I believe so much in evidence-based coaching mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to do something just because somebody in the, in the past said that's the way to do it. I want to find out what's the most effective way of playing. Sure. Um, I want our teams to play, to play in a style of play that will be more possession-based and very positive possession. I want them to look forward, think forward, and I want them to, to, to play in a style that will help them develop. But, you know, football's about perception, decision, and execution. In, 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 in it's up to, and there's a lot of things that, that need to be put in place for them to get exactly where I want to do, but it's all a journey, mm -hmm. and it's a layering approach. And I think the biggest impact I can have is the mentoring of, of coaches to enjoy the game more and think in more depth about the game. And, um, you know, you've spent a lot of time uh, analyzing game film. Um, you've talked a lot over the years about the importance of video um, yeah. in the learning process, in the teaching process. Um, speak to, the, to that impact that it's had on our club um, with the video technology and, and on specific groups of people? Um, I, th I think that I believe that children now, in terms of their learning style that's dominant, are mostly visual learners mm -hmm. um, due to the amount of screens they're looking at. <laughs> um, I believe that, that through Kevin Minch, everything he's talked to me about evidence-based learning there's so many unique things we can put in place at the Fusion in terms of peer-to-peer -peer learning, mm -hmm. in terms of the feedback loop, in terms of how children learn now. And um, clearly by seeing them perform and also giving them opportunity to see a higher level team possibly doing this, this, these actions at a higher level, that gives them a motivation but an also belief in what we're trying to do. I, I think every everything needs to be an interaction between, it can't just be the coach telling the players what to do. Mm -hmm. We have to ha create a world where it's a lear collaborative learning environment where the players ask the, que the questions of the coach as well. Um, and so we get this feedback loop, which, which will really develop. We've already started in the feedback to players, how we've changed it this year, and that's been a very exciting thing. Mm -hmm. And players often get a very much a shock in when they see themselves play because yeah. how they perceive themselves in the head and what yeah. they see on the screen they're sort of looking at the screen they're amazed what well, it looks like that <laughs> but but that's a very good thing and and, yeah. and then and then that then they understand from there the areas of improvement i often watch when they watch themselves play um, the technical execution of the players are they putting their foot exactly in the right position is their their plant foot in the right position and 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 it becomes the perception, the decision, and the execution. Looking around themselves, do they know where they are? Right. Can they select the correct decision? Then can they they execute the action? And, and that's what we're looking for. But I, I found video analysis to be one of the best. There's a lot of wonderful learning things that we can do, but I found that in terms of my own learning yeah. and my, my ability to explain to children, that's been wonderful for me awesome and I think uh, I've seen it firsthand the the value of the video um, evidence and, and using it for sessions you've done some amazing uh, presentations with teams with the coaches with with even the parents right and, yep. and giving them the opportunity to go back and see a game stop it show what what we were trying to do yeah. right even if it didn't work out because yeah. a lot of times I think the kids maybe make the wrong decision, yeah, but they course. were, or they were trying to do the right thing, but the situation yeah. in the game just didn't allow that to happen, right? Exactly, and, and that's where the constant feedback comes in. Yeah. I mean, 
mistakes are just part of the learning process. So right. so they, they, they can learn from these um, via the video. And, and the thing, of course, with video, it doesn't lie. It's right. not an opinion. Yeah. It's very much what actually happened. Yeah. So it doesn't become, the, well, the coach is telling me I need to do this, but I'm not sure that's quite right. But the video is very objective. Absolutely. And obviously we've, we've tried for, for our club to um, invest more in that because we believe in it and getting the um, video cameras permanently yeah. on, on you know, three fields at BB&T Park and um, three fields at, at Bryan Park and now soon, soon to be a few more. And um, we're investing in that because we're realizing that um, it is so important yeah. for the development of our, of our players yeah. and for the education piece for our coaches and, and yeah. parents and everything. So that's fantastic. Um, I think, you know, to kind of piggyback on that, I believe that um, you know, with our partnership with the Seattle Sounders, um, I think you've been able to have some great opportunities um, to go to Seattle, to go with their academy, to work with their staff. Um, I know that a lot of our families don't know exactly what the partnership is and how it works, but um, I know you've seen tremendous value. Can you kind of just share with our, our families, what is it uh, about the partnership with the Seattle Sounders that's so special? What, it, what are you bringing back to, to our club and to our, to our players? Um, I mean, fundamentally, I believe what's happening in Seattle Sounders Academy is, is a revolution of football. Mm -hmm. um, they are very evidence-based. That is what, in terms of when people talk about elite, what I see when I go there, that is elite. Mm -hmm. In terms of everything, standards, expectations, quality of coaching, consistency, transparency. Um, I don't think we should want to be Seattle Sounders Academy, but we must take their ideas. And I've been very fortunate to get very close access to how they work. And I can bring some of those ideas to our highest level, but also they've provided detailed curriculums that all our coaches have access to, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful resource. Yeah. Um, and they also come and for a few days over the last years, they've done various coaching education sessions, which are the highest level work. Oh, yeah. um, so everyone in the club will effectively get to improve or learn from what they're providing back to us. Mm -hmm. And our coaches have access to what I consider the highest level sessions and curriculums and principles. And in our, the foundation of my job as a technical director is to help implement a lot of the ideas I've seen at Seattle, but understanding how the level of players were working slightly different but we can do things in a very similar way. Yeah, yeah. I think that's always the hardest thing is to, ha when people see, oh, the Sounders Academy is doing this, how does our, you know, our bronze team or our royal yeah. team or even our gold team or whoever it may be, how do they do that? Or how does the coach um, change that session to accommodate the difference in, in ability, right? Yeah. And that's a skill. That's yeah. a skill and that mm -hmm. takes time. Mm -hmm. The one thing I would say is the principles of the game never change. Right, right. So regardless of age, gender, ability, we can try to um, implement the same principles as Seattle Sounders. Mm -hmm. There is, they are doing it at a higher level, mm -hmm. but in terms of the decision-making process of players, it can still be directly related to their, um, their principles. And right. that's what I want to try and implement over time, but this is this is a layering process. This is not going to happen instantly. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean just because we execute the principles well, we're going to start winning all these games. Right. But we are going to give players a better foundation. They will enjoy the game more. They'll have more knowledge of the game, and we can then back up what the the documents we're creating of of who we are and what we're trying to do. Absolutely. So, perfect segue into. Um, I know you've already mentioned Kevin Mincher. Um, folks will get an opportunity to meet Kevin through this podcast as well. But um, obviously he came and spent, uh, spent time with us over the last year um, as a consultant. Um, and he has really helped us to really focus in on our what we do, why we do it, how we do it, and then also our core values in action. Um, I think 
that one thing with our core values in action and speaking of the fusion way, which um, our membership will start to see more and more signage and, and, yeah. and things because we're putting it out there. This is what we do and how we're doing it. So um, in those uh, in the fusion way, you know, we have the different stakeholders um, and we talk about the relationships that are so critical between players and parents and coaches. Just really quickly, um, speak to what you believe in your role. What is the role of each of those stakeholders? Uh, in terms of their links with each other or just yeah, sort of just, isolated? So what's the role of that of a player um, mm -hmm. in this in creating the best environment possible for, for them? And what's the role of the coach and what's the role of the parent? I think, I think the role of the player um, is to, to constantly want to improve. Mm -hmm. Um, and, 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 and again, it's an overused thing in society now, but to have a growth mindset mm -hmm. and always believe they can get better, always believe that they have um, steps to go. Um, I, I, I like players who come with that, that passion and, and they love playing. Yeah. Um, they, they're excited to be at training. They're excited to be at games. They, they want feedback. They're not defensive. They want to tell me more. How do I become better at this game? What should I do? In that, and I feel so so strongly about the loop of the feedback. It shouldn't just be the coach telling the player what to do. The players need to ask questions back. In this situation, what could I have done? Mm -hmm. And then the learning it becomes exponential. Um, of course, I think the coach is to, to the facilitator of the environment. Mm -hmm. It's a player's game. Soccer is a player's game, different to some other American sports. Um, it's it, 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 everything we do should be player centric. It should be about the players. I believe the coach is there to help facilitate the right environment for players to learn. Yeah, that's so important. So not about I'm going to create an environment that's going to help the team win that makes me look like a good coach. That's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about facilitating facilitating an environment where there's growth, there's learning, there's improvement. There's it's progressive. It's evidence based. That's what I find so exciting. Of course, the, the parents are, are vital in all this as well. Um, the financial commitment, what what's expected of them in terms of travel, how many training sessions the players need to get to, yeah. and in, in everyone's very much a part of it. And I think with the feedback process, it can this feedback loop can go always possible, mm -hmm. and we can all help each other learn parents' opinions of what we're doing is absolutely vital for our improvement. Mm -hmm. They see so much of it. Um, so everyone within this should be constantly trying to improve. Mm -hmm. um, parents as parents, players as players, coaches as coaches. Sure. And But it's very important that we're all in this together. Now, um, does that mean that a, a parent should be telling the coach what they should, the, the certain level of expertise happens mm -hmm. and, and there should be a, a, a respect from the parents about what the coach is trying to do and yeah. create the right environment and there's, there's, there's sort of boundaries to everything. Yeah. Um, but, but we're all in this together. And, and, but if, if one of these three stakeholders isn't doing what their, their expectation, it, it's gonna break down. Right. And, but if all, the, the other side of that is if all three people are in this, all together and we're all trying to do the right things it could be a really really exciting world absolutely and one of the hardest things of being a player a coach or a parent is at times to take the emotion out of the game mm -hmm. and in football isn't soccer is an emotional game yeah. so but just understanding when your emotions are taken over as a player or a parent <laughs> or a coach can you be emotionally intelligent to understand what's the correct path to take absolutely excellent so a lot a lot of what you i think a big part of what you just said is about development, right? Hundred percent, and that desire to continually improve, which we've said as an organization, that's what we want to continually do. And, and so, I appreciate um, you kind of talking about that. In terms of development for yourself, you've had um, some great opportunities, not just for coaching development, or, um, but also personal development. And, um, some of the going to see the Seven Habits course, and um, and some of the the things that we've done with the full-time staff, with our di disc assessment and things like that. How, how valuable do you, have you started to feel that some of that maybe personal development is and what that means to you and your current role? I mean, personal development is everything. Constantly wanting to improve. I, I embrace and I love going on to courses where it's non-soccer specific. 
um, and you see other people in other lines of work and and often you see they 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 deal with the same issues just in another occupation and right, right. um, I, I think self-awareness is so important all the time and getting to know who you are and what makes you tick and in 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 often within the self-awareness you find all these areas you've got to improve on and um, you need to, we all need to try to model the best behavior for me as the technical director so everyone um, the coaches or, or the players or the parents see the behavior from some senior people that that they aspire to or they want to be and um, I think I, I think it, it's helped me I mean it's, it's so vital there's just so much of life you don't know mm-hmm. but at least I know I don't at least I've got an idea what I don't at least I'm trying to learn what I don't know right. rather than not know what I don't know <laughs> and what do you think is the um, maybe the biggest thing that you have um, changed or developed as you've learned more and learn more about yourself what's maybe the one thing that you would say you've um, since maybe when we started here at the club till now what do you think is that like biggest change for you um, it's it's vital how I mentor young coaches mm-hmm. um, how I try to and not just sometimes you have to provide an environment that's going to make them want to learn. Yeah. And, and now being a 20-year-old person was different to when we were in our 20s and to understand the differences that have happened. And I, I, think, I think mentorship was something I didn't think about enough in my 20s that now I'm, I think, very strongly about mm-hmm. because I want maybe some of the things that, I didn't quite get, but I would would have liked. Yeah. I would love to try and provide that for coaches. And similarly, as a soccer player in England, some of the environments I thought would have helped, I didn't get. I want to try and create them here at the Fusion. Excellent. And I know that our staff really looks up to you and respects you and um, really enjoys the all of the time that you spend with them in, in mentoring, whether it's not always on the soccer side of things, but even even just uh, professional development, personal development. So appreciate your leadership there. So I um, appreciate you um, spending some time. Um, at the end of every podcast, we like to ask some rapid okay. fire questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a few quick ones. So here we go. Yeah. Uh, first one, what's your favorite food? Yeah, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go Indian. Indian. All right. Yeah. Um, your favorite place that you've ever visited? Um, well, if my wife's watching this, um, I think it's very important that I say Maui, Hawaii. <laughs> um, favorite or place you want to visit? Um, I, I would love to go to South Africa, mm-hmm. um, Johannesburg, Cape Town. And um, that's an area of the world. Or I mean, I'd love to go to the Africa mm-hmm. continent, but very, I would love to go to South Africa. Okay. Um, what's your favorite band or musician? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, Music's vital in my life. <laughs> vital. Um, That's why I asked it. My, um, I will, the Smiths. Smiths, all right. And what's your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Um, I mean, uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> um, I think it's a choice between reading and running. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'll go reading. Reading, okay. Uh, who's the MVP on our Fusion staff? Um, I'm going um, 100% Christian Strain. All right. Um, who is your favorite coach, whether it's someone that coached you or whether it's just a you know professional coach that everyone kind of might know? Um, well, as a, a Geordie, someone from Newcastle, um, in my teenage years, Kevin Keegan... I don't think it was due to his level of coaching, but he was <laughs> inspirational to the, the Northeast. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, another Geordie, um, Bobby Robson, who was a very humble man. And was a, there's a documentary on Netflix for anyone who would like to watch that about Bobby Robson, a wonderful person from the Northeast. And I would hope that I have similar values to someone like that. Awesome. Um, finally, uh, what do you want to be remembered for? It's a deep one. <laughs> um, I, I think in terms of this world, yeah, 
Um, I, I would like to be remembered for someone who put players first, um, put understood this as a learning environment, and someone who really valued learning and improvement and helping coaches and not in being progressive and evidence based and trying to move things forward um, all the time. Fantastic. All right, so um, obviously, Mark, it's an honor to work alongside you. I know we've been uh, working together for a long time. I, I always appreciate your, your passion, um, not only just for the game, but for wanting to do things the right way. Um, I know that um, we don't always agree on the way <laughs> things should always work, but um, you're very, um, I know that you're willing to challenge things. And, yeah. and, and it's because you want the, the best. You yeah. don't want us to be complacent. It's yeah. not because you're trying to make things difficult. And um, I really appreciate that about you. I think it's, a, um, it's so critical on our staff for someone to model that. Um, and you're always seeking um, to find a better way to do yeah. things. So I really, I really appreciate that. I think our, our membership may not get to see that or know that what's going on behind the scenes, um, like I said. So um, again, thank you, for, thank you for being a great leader in the club. And um, I thank you for your, for your time today. Um, everyone who has joined us today, I hope you enjoyed our time spent with, with Mark Simpson. Um, look forward to our, our next podcast um, that we'll be publishing soon. Thanks so much, Go Fusion. For more information please visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to this podcast.